Hey folks, I want to finish off getting through uh, how to interpret our R output when we run a simple linear regression. So I'm going to pick up where I left off from the first video and we'll just round out these last few measures that I have at the end of the PowerPoint here. Uh, if you've gone through the whole PowerPoint on your own and read through things, that's fantastic. Uh, you may not need this video, but I'll just highlight again what everything is here and hopefully that will be useful for you. And a lot of the things that are talked about here are what I talk about in the uh, second lecture video, at least, uh, for this week of uh, week four. So uh, the week four lecture material you'll see repeated here, and so you'll sort of see it in two places, which uh, generally is helpful, I think, getting that repetition. So anyway, so we left off on the residual standard error, and I know I talked a lot about that. And uh, just as sort of a connection, because the residual standard error uh, filters into the rest of our statistics, remember that it's the typical error of our model. And it comes from the SSE, or the sum of squared errors. And it's simply the square root of our mean square error, or the square root of our sum of squared errors divided by the degrees of freedom that are given to the error. So it comes from sum of squared errors, and we use it as a way to describe the typical error in our model. And yeah, hopefully, if you've been through the chapter, uh, you've seen a little bit about, and the videos, you uh, lecture videos, you've seen a little bit about uh, sums of squares model, sums of squared total, and sums of squared error. And I've talked about the R squared, and hopefully you read about the R squared. So in our regression output, the just the standard R squared is called the multiple R squared. And as you've seen in the book and in my explanations, we interpret it as the percentage of variation in the response variable that is explained by variation in the explanatory variable. And we think of it, if you remember that big circle I drew in the lecture video, uh, it's the simply a ratio of how much of the variation is taken up by our model, sums of squares, air, sums of squares model, divided by the total variation, sums of squares total. And we can also write it in terms of the sums of squares error by doing one minus the sums of squares error divided by the sums of squares total. So uh, you don't need to necessarily get bogged down in the ratio and or the one minus the error over total. Uh, at this point, just remember, keep in mind that it's just a ratio of uh, how much how well our model is doing at explaining total variation so we want multiple r squared to be very high in some fields 0.2 or 0.3 is really high in other fields they want closer to 0.7 or 0.8 so it really depends on what field you're in and what problem you're working on that determines whether or not this r squared is high enough but that's all it is. It's a simple ratio. We'll get into this a little bit more uh, in the future chapters, but we can actually make an adjustment to this R squared measurement. And what it is, it's the same, uh, we interpret it the same way as we interpret it the R squared. But what the adjusted R squared does, and you can look in the book for the formula for this. Um, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to require you to do any formulas with going from R squared to adjusted R squared. That's not what this class is about. But what you need to know is that the adjusted R squared takes into account how many explanatory variables are in your model. So the way regression tends to work and you'll see this when we do multiple regression, is that if you just keep adding explanatory variables to your model, it's going to make the multiple R squared just go up and up and up and up. 
Uh, that's just sort of a mathematical out artifact of how we calculate the R squared. The problem is that if we keep adding more and more explanatory variables to our model, those variables may not actually be adding a lot more explanation. They may just be artificially increasing our multiple R squared, but they may not actually be statistically significant. They may just be worthless. So what the adjusted R squared does is it penalizes people for adding useless variables to the model. And so the way it works, the adjusted R squared is always going to be lower than the multiple R squared. But what how the adjusted R squared works is that if you add a another significant, excuse me, if you add another explanatory variable to your model, but that explanatory variable is not statistically significant or it's just not a good variable, it'll make your adjusted R squared be much lower than the R squared. And you'll see a big discrepancy between these two things. So uh, for right now, the R squared is fine for talking about a one explanatory variable situation. After that, I'll ask that you just talk about the adjusted R squared. But I'll ask you that specifically so that you won't have to guess. And really, either of these measures is a good measure for seeing how much of the total variation is explained by the model. But again, the adjusted R squared takes into account how many variables you add to your model. If you're adding variables to your model without being careful, without checking for whether or not they're significant, the adjusted R squared will penalize you. And that's why it's a good measure when we start considering more complicated models. And the last two things here are this F value. And I talked a fair amount about the F value uh, at the end of the second video for this week four lecture. And I just want to point out some of the numbers dealing with it. So the F value is given at the bottom here. And the way the F statistic works, if you, again, if you sort of look at how it's talked about it in the book and in my lecture, the F score is just a ratio of the model, how well the model is doing, to what the error is doing. So it's just a measure, it's just a ratio of model over error. And a higher F value is good because a higher F value means their model is doing a lot more explaining than the error. And we want our model to be doing a lot of the explaining. So the bigger the F statistic, the bigger the F score, the better. And I've got just the math here. And again, I show this in the lecture video if you want to see it a little more closely. But it's just the ratio of the mean square model, MSM, divided by the mean square error, MSE. And we can calculate these things with just a couple of steps. But I won't have you calculate it, but I want you to see where it comes from. And because we have a ratio of two things that we measure, mean square model, mean square error, the F statistic has two numbers to describe the degrees of freedom. And the first number is called the numerator degrees of freedom. And it's just the degrees of freedom of the model. And the second number is the error degrees of freedom or denominator degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom error. We'll see this a little more clearly once we get into multiple regression. But when we, if, if I were to have you, and I wouldn't have you do this, but if, we were, if I were to have you look up the F statistic, and manually look up its p-value, you need to have these two degrees of freedom because the F statistic is composed of these two things, the mean square model and the mean square error, which each have their own measure for degrees of freedom. And in the one sentence summary, the F value measures the significance of the overall model and not just any one variable.
because in this case we only have one variable, points per game, the F statistic will, in a sense, also describe the fact that our points per game variable is statistically significant. There's only one variable. So obviously the T score, the significance of the explanatory variable will agree with whether or not the model is significant because the model is just this one variable. So in multiple regression, this situation will change. And then we will be able to distinguish between statistical significance of each variable versus the statistical significance of the overall model. So just remember F is the overall model and uh, you'll be in good shape with that. And lastly, this is just the p-value associated with the F statistic. And just like our regular hypothesis testing and significance level, we tend to say that a p-value less than 0 0.05 indicates that the overall model is significant. And that's, uh, that's really conceptually all that's going on here with this. So I think that's all I need to say about this. And now you should be able to interpret all parts of a basic regression output. And once we add more variables to our model, uh, the only thing that's going to change is just how many variables we have listed under our columns here. So otherwise, we're still going to get F and multiple R squared and residual standard error and all these other things over here. All these things will still be here once we add more explanatory variables, but we're just going to have more variables in our column and more uh, rows of information for each of those variables. So that's it. You can all be regression output wizards now with all this information. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.